Ian Shaw, Ancient Egypt, A Very Short Introduction. Embark on a journey through the sands of time as we explore the enigmatic world of ancient Egypt in this summary of Ian Shaw's, Ancient Egypt, a very short introduction. Delve deep into the sophisticated culture that emerged around 400 BC, and uncover the pharaonic period that spanned three millennia. With the gift of the Nile, Egypt flourished, leading to a wealth of fascinating artifacts, including the well-preserved tombs, temples, and hieroglyphic inscriptions. This summary will provide you with insights into the pharaohs, religion, and daily life in ancient Egypt, as well as the significant archaeological discoveries that help piece together its history. Unveiling Ancient Egypt Secrets The 1898 discovery of the Narmer Palette in a 6,000-year-old temple marked a significant milestone in understanding ancient Egyptian civilization. As one of the earliest examples of hieroglyphic writing, the artifact has informed scholars about Egyptian culture from the 4th millennium BC. Egypt's timeline can be traced back from the zenith of its civilization during the pharaonic period to the earliest hominid presence. The Nile River's annual flooding helped shape this society, with its fertile banks nurturing inhabitants and the arid climate preserving a trove of historical artifacts. The Narmer Palette, discovered by British Egyptologists James Quibble and Frederick Green in 1898, still fascinates scholars to this day. Found within the ruins of a 6,000-year-old temple, this two-sided stone slab serves as one of the earliest examples of hieroglyphic writing. Filled with captivating images, the intricate artifact reveals essential insights into Egypt's past and the emergence of its distinct culture as early as the 4th millennium BC. As testimony to the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt, the front of the palette displays intertwined lions standing above a king looking down on defeated enemies. The flip side showcases the king, identified as Narmer, preparing to strike a captive with a pear-shaped mace. Today, our study of ancient Egypt commences with the Pharaonic period, which spanned three millennia from 3100 BC to 332 BC. While this time marks the peak of Egyptian civilization, its rich history stretches much further back to a period when early hominids inhabited northeast Africa around 400,000 years ago. The area's natives journeyed long before settlements appeared along the Nile River in 600 BC. These settlements emerged as Egypt's climate turned wetter, eventually fostering a sophisticated culture by 400 BC. As rain remained a rare occurrence, the Nile River's annual flooding played a crucial role in the society's development by depositing fertile silt along its banks necessary for crop growth. Egypt's arid climate didn't just influence agriculture, it also ensured the preservation of countless historical artifacts. Elaborate tombs, temples, and inscriptions have gifted modern scholars with the opportunity to piece together the captivating story of this ancient nation and how it thrived as a unique civilization amid a hostile environment. The Narmer Palette's significance in this greater narrative only further underscores its incomparable value in understanding the tapestry of Egypt's brilliant past. Decoding Ancient Hieroglyphs In 394 AD, the last known hieroglyphic inscription was carved into a temple wall on Philae Island, marking the end of an ancient script. However, it wasn't until 1822 when Jean-Francois Champollion deciphered hieroglyphs, allowing scholars to explore the inner lives of the Egyptians. Comprising of ideograms, phonetic signs, and determinatives, hieroglyphs were primarily used for ceremonial purposes. To gain insight into ordinary people's lives, other sources need to be studied alongside these intricate texts. Imagine walking into a temple dedicated to the goddess Isis in Philae and spotting an intricate inscription carved on a wall, an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph from 394 AD. This inscription marks the end of an era, as it's the last known date that hieroglyphs were in use. For over a millennium, humanity was clueless about their meaning, unable to unlock the secrets they held. The mystery was solved in 1822 when Jean-Francois Champollion decoded Egyptian hieroglyphs. This groundbreaking moment enlightened the world of Egyptology, bringing an end to its dark age. 
scholars no longer had to rely on secondhand information from Greek or Roman records or biblical accounts, they could finally delve into the genuine world of the ancient Egyptians. Hieroglyphs, an early form of writing, played a major role in ceremonial practices. They can be classified into three categories, ideograms, phonetic symbols, and determinatives. Ideograms are visuals representing the objects they portray, like an image of a man representing the word man. Phonetic hieroglyphs focus on the sounds of spoken words or syllables, whereas determinatives clarify the meaning of adjacent hieroglyphs. Understanding Egyptian inscriptions is a daunting task, as it isn't always apparent whether images are mere illustrations or text meant to be read. The origins of hieroglyphs are also debated, though most scholars believe they were primarily developed for ceremonial purposes. A unique aspect of Egyptian culture is the belief that language held tangible, physical power. Many tomb inscriptions avoided using the symbol for movement or even removed legs from bird images. Such practices aim to hinder any malevolent forces from entering the tomb. Hieroglyphs provide valuable insights into Egyptian culture, but they only reveal part of the story. Since ritualistic writing typically represents an elite perspective, additional sources are crucial for understanding the experiences of ordinary Egyptians during the Pharaonic era. As we continue to uncover the layers of their captivating civilization, we strengthen our connection to a world that, at once, feels both distant and fascinatingly familiar. Divine Kingship in Ancient Egypt The ancient Egyptians' cosmological worldview heavily featured their kings, who were often depicted alongside gods, reflecting their divine legitimacy. One example is the Narmer palette, which displays a royal smiting scene that recurs throughout Egyptian art, emphasizing a pharaoh's power to maintain harmony by conquering chaos. This combination of kingly and divine elements symbolizes the lack of division between religion and state. It has been proposed that some Egyptian art might even be considered propaganda, particularly in the case of female pharaoh Hatshepsut, who likely sought to showcase her divine connections through claims of being the offspring of the god Ammonius. However, evidence also suggests that the kings may have truly believed they were gods or incarnations of the falcon god Horus, making them central figures in the Egyptian cosmological belief system. Egyptology offers unique insights in this aspect as many mummified remains of pharaohs have survived, allowing historians to study their physical features alongside texts and artifacts from their reigns. Defining Ancient Egyptian Identity It is commonly assumed that the ancient Egyptians were a distinct group from their neighbors. Initial assumptions might lead one to believe that their identity was based on physical or racial characteristics. However, studies show that the DNA of Egyptian mummies linked them to both Near Eastern and Sub-Saharan African people, proving the diversity within the population. The ancient Egyptian identity, instead, was more than likely based on their unique culture and language, which showed acceptance of various physical appearances, ethnicities, and even sexual preferences. While one might assume that the ancient Egyptians classified themselves by physical traits, this is not entirely accurate. The innate desire to categorize people into racial types based on looks is a modern concept, and may not have been crucial to ancient Egyptians. Research conducted in 2017 on Egyptian mummies revealed an array of genotypes from various ancestries. This diversity is further showcased in the art from that time, with a variety of physical and ethnic characteristics depicted in surviving portraits. Rather than emphasizing physical appearance, the ancient Egyptians potentially identified themselves through their unique culture and language. This culture was welcoming to racial and physical diversity and likely tolerant of different sexual preferences, as evidenced by portrayals of heterosexual and homosexual relationships. For instance, a tomb in Saqqara, belonging to royal manicurists, shows them in intimate acts like embracing and appearing to kiss. With our modern world struggling with its own identity crises, the ancient Egyptian culture's inclusive approach and appreciation for diversity provide a refreshing perspective. Studying the ethnicity, race, gender, and sexual preferences of this civilization remains a fascinating field in contemporary Egyptological research. Unveiling Egypt's Death Obsession 
Contrary to common beliefs, Egyptians weren't obsessed with death but embraced life's pleasures. However, the fascination with death certain existed, especially among the believers of the cult of Osiris. According to the myth, Osiris, the god of death and resurrection, became the first mummy when his wife, Isis, gathered and reassembled his dismembered body. This story provided a basis for mummification, which Egyptians viewed as necessary for preservation after death. They believed a well-preserved physical body would allow the spirit to enter the afterlife. Herodotus, the ancient Greek historian, documented the mummification process, which required a slitter to cut open the body and remove organs, while a pickler dried and packed them in jars. In the afterlife, some believed humans could transform into stars, while others envisioned it as a continuation of life in another world, the field of reeds. Decoding Ancient Egyptian Religion Ancient Egyptian religion often brings to mind images of animal-headed deities, such as Anubis and Horus. However, the true nature of these representations and their significance in Egyptian beliefs is unclear. It is known that religious practice in ancient Egypt involved the concealment and revelation of sacred idols, with temples providing a space for the movement of objects related to worship. Access to temples was generally limited, and the public could only view the deities on rare occasions, such as during festivals. Egyptologists often debate the importance of phallocentrism in Egyptian art, with the phallus featuring prominently in creation myths as a symbol of fertility. Understanding these aspects is crucial to interpreting the complexities of ancient Egyptian religion and beliefs. Ancient Egyptian religion, with its pantheon of animal-headed deities, often leaves us with questions about how the Egyptians themselves interpreted their divine representations. Did they see a literal portrayal of the gods, or were the images simply symbolic? The foundation of religious practices in ancient Egypt revolved around the concealment and revelation of sacred idols. Temples played a crucial role in facilitating the movement of religious objects, allowing offerings to be made and housing the divine images. However, access to these sacred spaces was restricted for ordinary citizens, who could only glimpse the idols on special occasions like festivals. This limited access has led some experts to believe that ancient Egyptian religion was innately secretive and selective, with the general population having minimal understanding of their own beliefs. The debate among Egyptologists over the true interpretation of these deities and religious practices continues to this day. An intriguing aspect of Egyptian religious iconography is the frequent presence of phallocentrism. Despite refraining from depicting sexual acts directly, the Egyptians often portrayed the erect penis, as exemplified by the fertility god, Min. These images can be traced back to Egyptian creation myths, where gods like Adam generated the next generation of deities through acts of self-fertilization, without the need for a goddess. This portrayal of the phallus has puzzled Egyptologists for centuries, but its ubiquity in ancient Egyptian art cannot be ignored. The prominence of this symbol suggests that it was a vital aspect of Egyptian religious life and beliefs, a key to unlocking the enigma of how they perceived their godly pantheon. By delving into the complexities of Egyptian religious practices, the roles of temples and sacred objects, and the significance of phallocentrism in their art, we can begin to uncover a more holistic understanding of ancient Egyptian religion and beliefs, shedding light on a civilization that continues to captivate our curiosity. Pyramid Theories, Fact versus Fantasy Ancient Egypt has dispersed into popular culture, leading to alternative and wildly imaginative interpretations. The pyramids, in particular, have long been a center of intrigue, sparking theories ranging from plausible to absurd. While many indulge in fantasies involving super-advanced civilizations or extraterrestrial involvement, mainstream Egyptology continues investigating the ancient marvels, acknowledging that the Egyptians themselves built the pyramids using structurally sound methods to create tall and long-lasting monuments. Ancient Egypt, a captivating subject for many, extends well beyond the walls of academia. With journalists, film producers, advertising executives, and conspiracy theorists contributing to the proliferation of alternative ideas, it is often difficult to differentiate fact from fiction. This amalgamation of mummy mysteries, Hollywood films, 
and Halloween costumes generates misperceptions surrounding the true history of ancient Egypt. Among the assortment of fiction, real artifacts, such as the bust of Nefertiti, endure, although severed from their original context. These relics now exist in a postmodern vacuum, open to a myriad of interpretations. But perhaps no subject in ancient Egypt has captured the imagination more than the pyramids themselves. Across centuries, many fanciful theories have emerged attempting to explain their creation and purpose. The imaginative theories concerning pyramids vary from somewhat plausible to utterly outrageous. Many early speculations embraced biblical ideas, such as the Roman author Julius Honorius' 5th century suggestion that the pyramids were ancient granaries belonging to the biblical Joseph. Later, Middle Ages Arab scholars proposed the Egyptians built them to preserve scientific knowledge from the destruction of Noah's flood. In modern times, the theories have claimed the pyramids were constructed by a mysterious, advanced civilization predating the Egyptians. Some even argue for extraterrestrial involvement. However, while fascinating and entertaining, the reality is that these theories are not only incorrect but also perpetuate sinister, racist assumptions that the Egyptians, an African people, couldn't have built such sophisticated monuments. Mainstream Egyptology, however, provides a considerably more straightforward interpretation, the Egyptians dot build the pyramids. The structure's unique shape can be attributed to the stability it offers when creating tall, long-lasting monuments. Nevertheless, some individuals prefer to indulge in the realm of fantasy rather than appreciate the remarkable reality brought to light by established, fact-based Egyptology. As we wrap up our exploration of ancient Egypt, we are left with a deeper understanding of this remarkable civilization. From its origins along the Nile to the ruling pharaohs intertwined with the civilization's cosmological worldview, ancient Egypt has left an indelible mark on history. Shedding light on the use of hieroglyphs, the intricacies of religion, and the diverse nature of the people that lived within this enigmatic society, Ian Shaw's book unravels the mysteries of Egypt, while acknowledging the alternative theories and popular culture fascination that continue to surround it. With powerful kings and gods, the life and afterlife of ancient Egyptians were truly interconnected, leaving behind an invaluable legacy for future generations to marvel at and learn from.